Um, I'm Brian Glasscock. I'm the Commissioner of Environment for the City of Boston. And uh, let me just start off very quickly by saying that uh, uh, National Wildlife and uh, Environment Massachusetts, among many others, uh, really have to be uh, commended for uh, 600 and what is it now, 39,000 of anything or something, but to, to get 639,000 signatures uh, is, is an amazing uh, feat and you should all be very proud and, and uh, uh, take comfort in the fact that uh, there's a, uh, a groundswell of support for this kind of uh, regulation now. Um, Boston is downwind of virtually everywhere else in the country. Uh, the air that we're breathing uh, about half the pollutants we're breathing on a day like today are coming from outside the Boston area, uh, whether it's Western Mass or in New England, but it could be coming from as far away as the Ohio River Valley. In fact, uh, with the, the large power plants that are that are downwind from Boston, we're getting a lot of fallout that uh, we really don't need. Now, we're all uh, electricity users, and we all bear some responsibility uh, for the fact that we use electricity. Uh, it has to be generated someplace, but uh, pretty clearly, uh, the technology is there, uh, the uh, political will is there, thanks to our, our EPA leadership in Washington and here in Region 1, uh, as well as on the state level, uh, and clearly with all those signatures, uh, the groundswell uh, is here to push for uh, tighter regulations. So I, I, I think uh, I won't keep us all standing out here in the sun too much longer, but uh, you all should be very, uh, very pleased with your, with your uh, efforts. The uh, city of Boston is doing what we can to reduce our energy consumption. Uh, Mayor Menino has given us some very tight uh, time frames to reduce uh, electricity use in the city and we've launched forward with a, a Renew Boston program to help uh, ordinary uh, folks make their homes more energy efficient. But uh, that's not enough. Uh, we're going to need tighter regulation on uh, emissions of uh, air toxics and uh, we appreciate uh, the leadership on the EPA level. Um, one last thing, I'm going fishing a little later this summer, and every time I apply for my fishing license, they give you a little warning, and the warning says, eating the fish may be hazardous to your health. I would love for the day when they don't hand out that warning anymore, we've dealt with this problem. I'm going fishing in northern Minnesota, it's about as remote as you can get. If mercury pollution is extending that far, it's that ubiquitous in our environment, we clearly need to do something about it. So I, again, thank you for coming out today, and uh, congratulations to everybody that worked on this project. Okay, and now our final speaker is EPA Region 1 Administrator Kurt Spaulding, and I am also going to hand him in here. We have a letter that's signed from over 200 groups from across the country, which we will ask him to deliver to Lisa Jackson in addition to the 639,000 comments that we will also be delivering. So here yeah. is Administrator Kurt Spaulding. Well, let me look at this letter first. Very impressive, everybody. I know how much work it goes into doing this kind of work and rounding up 630,000 comments and letters like this. As some of you may know, before I became Regional Administrator of uh, EPA, I was the Executive Director of Save the Bay, so I know how hard you've all worked to make this happen at a grassroots level. It's very, very important. And I want to thank you for your work. I also want to acknowledge the leaders that are here, my good friend Don Hooper from the National Wildlife Federation, Juan who just spoke, uh, of course Ben who, who just spoke, and of course Brian, congratulations on this effort. It's, I'm sorry I had this backwards. Ben who introduced it, Brian from Mayor Menino. Mayor Menino likes to say Beantown is Greentown and we're very happy that he takes that view. It's been a terrific collaborative arrangement with Boston as we try to accomplish environmental goals here in the city. Uh, again, I want to thank all of you and on behalf of uh, Administrator Jackson, I especially want to thank you for your work and, and your work helping us cut the heavy pollution coming from our heavy polluting power plants, our coal burning power plants, what this rule really addresses. Um, earlier this year, uh, when Administrator Jackson announced the proposed rule to cut mercury and air toxics from her most heavily polluting power plants, she talked about the many incredible benefits this rule is going to provide the American people. Uh, first, we need to talk about vitally important health effects. We estimate that once these clean air standards are in place, we will be able to prevent 17,000 premature deaths in America, 11,000 heart attacks, along with 120,000 cases 
of childhood asthma and 11,000 fewer cases of acute bronchitis among children. Amazing numbers. But as we all know here, these are not just numbers. Somewhere in the city today, in Boston, or in my hometown, Providence, or, or any of these urban areas, we're gonna have a, a mother and a father worry about a child who's breathing the air we see today. We're on ozone alert today, and we will be tomorrow and the next day. That child will experience, health, will experience headaches. Their breath will be shortened. At some point, I guarantee you, somewhere in the near vicinity here, they'll feel the need to take that child to an emergency room because of the health effects they're experiencing. And I would unfortunately say somewhere in America, with this kind of heat and ozone we've been having, someone will probably, some child will probably pass away. That's how serious this problem is. It's also got great benefits in, for, for just beyond the health effects of, of each and every one of us, but also the workforce we're going to produce. Um, these kinds of effects keep people from being productive. Um, because of these rules, we'll see 12,000, 12, uh, 200 fewer hospital admissions, as I, was, as I was just talking about, and 850,000 fewer sick days taken each year. Now, there's been a lot of talk about costs and benefits. These things represent costs. Every time someone goes to the hospital, it costs you and me money. When we talk about sick days, it costs our economy money. We're going to see tangible monetary benefits from this work. Now that's not the primary reason you do this, but as we talk about putting people to work and, and making the economy work better, these are important. Um, these will also open up safeguards for more pollution control technology. We'll see jobs across the whole economy. 31,000 construction jobs will be generated by these rules and over 9,000 long-term utility jobs. So again, don't let anybody tell you these rules cost our economy uh, money, that these somehow drag the economy. In the long run, they'll help the economy and improve our health. So they're very, very important. Now, something else the administrator spoke about the day she, she announced these rules was that cleaner air will help all of us and, and public health advocates, environmentalists, parents, even industry. Um, we've received support from everyone on this. There is a small group of people out there and small group of entities who are, who are challenging these rules. But these are widely supported everywhere. I'll finish up very quickly here. Um, so I want you to know that everybody supports these rules. It isn't something that is just supported by Administrator Jackson and, and uh, a small group of people. Uh, this is a widely supported rule. In Washington, we face a tough political climate. I don't know if you've been looking at the news. I think at some point we all probably just want to turn it off because it's just so depressing at some point. But this, there's a great choice before us in America. And we're, we're making that choice about clean air and good jobs for American people. And we thank you for weighing in on our behalf. Those 600,000 plus comments will mean a lot to everyone. Plus this letter will mean a lot as we go forward and press forward on these rules. I can tell you this is probably going to be the fight, well, the fight of this administration on the environment. Nothing is getting more um, opposition than trying to clean up our air. Because we all know why and who it impacts. I don't need to go into detail. But this is, a, this is about the people fighting for the right thing. You're weighing in, we appreciate it, and we want you to stick with it. Because it's not over today, it's going to go on for months and months. And to ask uh, to, to, to uh, do the one thing that uh, was talked about here, in, region, in this region we will enforce clean air rules. We have done so. Our states have stood with us, our communities have stood with us, and they will be enforced if we, if we get these rules through. So I thank you all very much. And, and good luck with future efforts on this whole endeavor.